Today we're going to learn about depth and complexity icons. The first icon that we're going to learn about is the big idea. The next icon we're going to learn about is details. The third icon is language of the discipline. And the fourth icon is unanswered questions. So, have any of you heard about the depth and complexity icon besides today? Have you learned about it in other classes? So this is all going to be new. So this is going to be real fun. So the first one we're going to look at is the actual frame. This is the frame that Mr. Schroeder has just passed out. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this as our note page. So when I start talking about the big idea on the next slide, you're going to write your notes right here. This will help you remember how or what the big idea is, OK? The next one we're going to go over on the slide will be the details. This is where you're going to write your notes, too. You'll put your notes right in here on how to remember when your teacher wants you to put down the details, what keywords are going to help you remember. Another one is the language of the discipline. That's the list. That's where you're going to put your notes right here. And then the final icon that we're going to do is unanswered questions. And this is where you put your um, notes right here. Okay? So the first one we're going to do is the big idea. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to read the definition. And after I read the definition, I want you as a table to talk about it and tell me what key words come out to you that are going to help you remember what the big idea is. Okay? It is identify or general statement that summarizes information or draws a conclusion based on evidence drawn from the text. All right? So now go talk with your table and see what key words are going to help you remember what the big idea is. All right? All right, so that's what you would put right here. Yeah, it summarizes. Good, that's a really good one too. Draw the conclusion. What do you think you have as your main, what you're going to feel right here? Evidence drawn from the text, but is it a lot of evidence? What is it going to be? So from that definition, what do you think you're going to actually pull from it? You're going to draw a conclusion, but what is it going to be? A general statement, right? It's just going to be one statement saying, this is the big idea, right? Because you're not going to go in, into the summary of the whole entire story. You're just going to say, this is the general statement, or this is the theme, or this is the main idea. Good. So um, who can give me the key words that you're going to put for a big idea? Where is the icon? All right, what do you have, honey? General statement. A general statement that, what does it do? Summarizes. Right, it summarizes, it, right? And you're drawing it from the text. So when I say the big idea of Shiloh may be animal rights or um, <coughs> friendship, it's just a general statement, right? Good job. Okay. That summarizes the text. That's my easy notes to remember. Now, what you're going to hear your teacher do is she's not going to say, what is the big idea? She's going to say, what overarching statement best describes what's happening? So what is the overarching statement? So kind of think of it as an umbrella. What is the overarching main idea of the story? Is it friendship? Is it war? Is it love? Is it um, courage? Is it resilience? All those can be the theme, OK? Perseverance. So that's what she's going to ask you. She's not going to ask you what all the details are. She's going to tell you what the overarching statement that best describes what's happening in the story. All right. So the next one we're going to do is details. Now details, think of it like this. The story is the little middle part of the flower. And then all the petals are the details. But when you're doing details, you need to make sure you remember that the details have to be relevant. It can't just be details that you want to tell about the story that don't make the story evolve. Okay, so when you think about details, think of it in that sense. So there are going to be four w definitions or the way we define it. There's elaboration, identify attributes, parts, and factors. 
This presentation is given from grades second to sixth grade. So with knowing that, I usually let the second graders pick parts because in second grade, when you say what are the parts of the story, they understand that. But from fourth, fifth, and sixth, I like them to use identify attributes or elaboration. So who can tell me what elaboration means? What does elaboration mean? The detail in the sentence. Okay, the details, right? So if I tell you, um, Mrs. C is standing here wearing a white shirt, right? And then you'd say, well, elaborate on it. And you would say, oh, well, Mrs. C is wearing a white shirt with black leggings and boots and has a gold bracelet. I've now elaborated and brought the details more so if you close your eyes, you actually know what's happening. So that's elaboration. What are identified attributes? What are attributes? How many of you know what the word attributes means? It means like the elements of it. Right, the elements. So, uh, so uh, this is a face, right? There are attributes to a face. What are some attributes to a face? Eyes. eyes. So there's eyes. Those are attributes to a face. What else are attributes to a face? A nose. A nose. What else? A mouth. A mouth. What else? Ears. Ears. What else? Hair. Hair. Neck. A neck. Eyebrows. Eyebrows. So those are all attributes. So those are just like parts of a story, right? So stories have attributes. So when you think of attributes, just think about a face. All the little parts of a face, those are all attributes. Okay? So when your teacher is asking you, she may say, what are his attributes in the story? Or what features characterize this? Or what specific elements define this? So now, as a table, I want you to pick what words you think are going to help you remember what details are. All right? So I'm going to. All right. So what did you find were key words that are going to help you remember what attributes are? Attributes. Good. So you'll put it right here. Good job, guys. How about you guys? What do you guys find? Identify attributes. And your table. What do you have? Attributes. Good. Attributes and features. Yeah. Perfect. Good job. So who can tell me what key words are going to help us remember details? Attributes. Attributes. All right. Is there anything else? Elaboration. Elaboration. Good. Great job. Good. Elements of the story. Good job. All right. So now we have details. Let's move on to our next one. Language of the discipline. And that icon is a mouth. Now when you think of language of the discipline, you want to think of specialized vocabulary. Skills and tasks specific to the discipline. Tools used and teacher talk. Once again, I told you this, this slideshow goes from second grade to sixth grade. So the ones that we're looking at here are tools used and teacher talk. Teacher talk is the one that the lower grades use. They say, oh, what does your teacher say? What kind of words do your teacher say? So when I say, what is the same as this? Does your teacher say, what is the same? Or do they say, what is the synonym? synonym? What is the opposite of this? Does your teacher, teacher say, what is the opposite? Or what does she say? What is the antonym? What is the antonym? So those are all language of the discipline, right? She doesn't. So in the stories, you wouldn't say, you would want to say, okay, the dog was hurt. You would say the dog was hurt. What language of the discipline could you use instead of saying the word hurt? The dog was injured. Injured. Injured is a language of discipline, right? It's, it's more specific. It gives. The, dog is wounded. the wounded is another language of the discipline. Who else can give me another word? Even in math, I don't say, what is the answer to the addition problem? What is the answer called? The sum. The sum. That's the language of the discipline. I don't say, what is the answer to a division problem? I say, quotient. So now I want you to talk with your table and see what key words are going to help you remember language of the discipline. Like, that is right. 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 How about you? What words do you Specific vocabulary, right? Because 
in Shiloh you would hear injured, right? But would you hear it in the book, that, the story that you just read last week? No, what words would you hear? You'd hear like discrimination, right? So it's a little bit different. Those words would be more specific to that text. Okay. What words did you get? What words? Specialized vocabulary. Specialized, vo Specialized vocabulary. Because it has to be linked to the text. So like I was talking to the table back there, in Shiloh, you would see injured. What was the story that you guys just read last week? What was it called? Would you see injured? What kind of words would you see in that story? We just talked about one of the words, suffrage or discrimination, right? So those key words are specific to that story. So that's why when you use language with this one, you're going to pull those vocabulary words that are linked to that story and pull those ones out, okay? So every story can have different specialized vocabulary. And like I said earlier, you're going to do an activity and it's going to focus on you, yourself, what is the big idea about you, some details to explain what makes you, and some language of the discipline. And one of the examples we used, um, one of the students used last time was he was a, big idea was he was a football player. His details were, I play Fremont, in Fremont Football League, I play for the Steelers, I practice three days a week, my games are on Saturday. And then his language of the discipline he had was quarterback, receiver, touchdown, and then flag. And one of his partner said, oh, you can't use flag. That's an easy word. And remember what I said, this vocabulary is linked to the task or discipline. So in football, is the flag the same flag that we use in the classroom? No. No. So is that vocabulary word specific to this task? Yes. yes, right? Because if he says he throws a flag on the field, is he throwing that flag? No, no he's throwing another flag, right? So that represents something totally different. So that's why if you're going to use flag, it's specific to this to this activity, right? Okay, good. So knowing that, there are the three deals. So what keywords we found was specialized vocabulary. So when you're looking in the text, you want to pull the specialized vocabulary that's linked to that actual story. All right. And then our last one is unanswered questions. Now, our unanswered questions are identify unclear ideas or missing information. Discuss, write about areas yet to be explored or, or proven. Note conclusion that needs further evidence or support. Now, when you have unanswered questions, when you read a story, do you wonder what happens after? That's what you're looking at, okay? Any questions that you may have after you've read something. Now you can go back and look for answers because I know in one of the grades in fourth grade, it was Alibaba, which you probably might have read last year. Uh, and it was about a boy who's changed his name. And there was uh, one of the kids that's like, oh, well, there's milk names. Do they still have milk names? So after he read that story, he went back and he researched to find out where do they still have milk names and where did it all even start? So that's how it all brings up all this new stuff that you can start exploring. So right now I want you to talk with your table and see what key words are important that are going to help you remember unanswered questions. What do you guys think? Right. Anything that's missing or unclear, you, you want to still ask that's an unanswered question for you, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Missing information on something that's still unclear that you still have questions about it. Yeah, perfect. Good job. And you got, what were your key words for unanswered questions? Missing information, right? If there's missing information, you have a question still. Anything else somebody put? Unclear. Unclear, yeah, you're still unclear about certain things. So, your teacher will now say, what is still not understood about this area or topic? So what part are you still unclear about it? Or she may say, what is still unknown? Maybe we need to go find out what happened to um, your main character in the last week's story, right? What is she doing now? Is she still alive? Is she still fighting for women's rights, right? In what ways is the information incomplete or lacking? So where is information lacking? Can we go find it out somewhere else and research it and find out these unanswered questions? So that's what you're looking at when you're looking at the unanswered questions. So when you think of a story now, and you look at this frame, 
You can now put it all together. Like we said, the story that you read last week was discrimination. You pulled out the details. You told me who the main character was, how she did speeches, how she actually became a judge and made it into a law. And then you showed me the vocabulary word like discrimination, suffrage. And then you, you still have questions like, where is she now? What, what is she still doing for women's rights? So you were able to put that frame together with the story that you did last week. So you understand how this will all work together? So what your teacher will be doing is looking at this and seeing that you're pulling out the key details, that you understand the story really well, and you can pull it up with the vocabulary too, all right? So you might ask why I'm here today. Well, the reason why is because we're trying to have you look at a story in a more abstract way. In the sense that I'm telling you this is because you can read the story, and you can say, oh, it's about a lady, like you guys did at first, about a lady who um, did women's rights, right? That's all you said. But then as we went through these icons, you're like, oh, she fought discrimination. She became a judge. She worked to make laws um, for women's rights. So you now turn that story about a lady who was fighting women's rights to all the reasons why she was fighting for women's rights and what started this whole process. So you were able to pull these four icons and bring that story to life in a more abstract way. And so the reason why I'm here is to help you read stories in a more focused way and be able to pull it together. So we get to do an activity that um, goes over this whole frame. 